for you. I hope you're doing fine. I hope you are enjoying your reading of Machado de Assis. This is the ninth lecture uh, of our course, The Development of Modern Fiction in the U.S. and Brazil. And today we're going to talk about Machado de Assis and we're going to introduce the reading of the novel uh, The Cosmos Memoirs of Brass Cubas, right? Uh, so today I'm going to say a couple of things, a couple of important aspects of the works of Machado de Assis, a little bit of his biography and uh, what he represents to Brazilian literature in a broad perspective. And we're going to start to discuss a few things, a few elements concerning his fiction <clears throat> and concerning specifically this um, novel that we're going to be discussing for the next two weeks, right? So now we are, we are uh, entering a different type of narrative style. Um, you probably noticed uh, that we have a huge difference uh, if we compare Moby Dick to the Cosmos Memoirs of Rascubus to start with. It's a smaller work, it's not a huge novel, it does not have this, this, this necessity of embracing the whole world, so there is some sort of um, a style and a rhythm that is a little more, it's a little lighter and it's not so grave and serious, right? On the contrary, to be honest, it's very funny in many moments, uh, and it's not pretentious at all, at all. Uh, so Machado de Assis is really, uh, with this novel, the first of his most significant novels. Um, he is, uh, what he's, his intentions are really not big and not um, uh, not very serious, right? Um, of course, he's, he's writing serious fiction and it's a very important novel to Brazilian literature overall, but it's really, uh, it has a different purpose if we compare it to Moby Dick, to, to Melville's work, right? So. But there's, there's one thing that I believe is similar if we compare these two works is the, um, the position that they occupy uh, in the uh, development of fiction both in the U.S. and Brazil and in the U.S. for Melville and in Brazil for Machado. Um, these two novels are responsible for starting, for, for uh, inaugurating for introducing a complex form of narrative, a complex type of fiction that was not practiced before. Um, Brass Cobus is a novel that is really different from what was being written uh, until up to up, up until that point, right? So just as Melville wrote something completely different from what we see in his contemporaries, Machado did the same, and they both um, started, uh, I mean, introduced to their national literatures a completely different perspective about what the novel is and what we can expect about the novel, right? So, um, Bras Cubas was published in 1881, so 30 years, 30 years ex exactly more or less exactly, uh, after uh, Moby Dick was published. And one thing that is different about these two novels, I mean, um, even though we have this, this common fact that they both mark an important moment of the development of fiction in the two countries, uh, there's one thing that is what we have to take into account, and I think I have already mentioned it, to you, uh, Machado de Assis had a different type of relationship with his public if we compare him to Melville. 
uh, Mel was not so influential in his time. He became very, very and strongly influential for writers throughout the 20th century. Uh, but that was uh, that was not the case with Machado de Assis. I mean, he was well read, well appreciated. There was a lot of criticism about him, but there was a lot of people who did appreciate his writings and did find a, an important uh, movement in our in the development of our literature when he published this novel, right? So. Machado de Assis was that, that he had a more a, a lighter and and the word light is going to be I'm going to use it a lot here, uh, but it, he had the lighter relationship with his readers, even though uh, throughout his novel uh, he, you probably noticed that he is very ironic and sarcastic with the readers, right? So. There was this tendency, and this was both in Brazil and in the U.S., maybe in the U.S. even more, because we had more readers. The U.S. was the country where you would find the, uh, the greater number of readers, uh, of people who were able to read uh, in the world, probably, at that time. And Brazil was just the other way around. It's, it's a country. We didn't have a lot of readers at all. We had a very small public. But, but among those who could read and who could appreciate his novels, um, uh, there, was, there was a lot of women. I mean, women at that time were known for enjoying uh, novels uh, very frequently, so they were the main audience and probably the target for many writers. And um, it was the case both in the U.S. and in Brazil. Um, and in Brazil, uh, Machado knew that uh, most of his readers would be women, and uh, he knew he was writing something that women usually wouldn't enjoy reading, so he kind of like found to try to find a way and I think he somewhat succeeded in that uh, he tried to find a way to be read by people who were not very well uh, um, I mean they were not really expecting a very experimental and very complex sort of fiction uh, but he got to find a way in between for these people, just like uh, Melville did when he wrote Bartleby. We're, we're going to get there and we're going to talk about this afterwards. So I believe that in, in Bartleby he got, uh, he found a way to extend his audience, extend his public, reach a, a greater uh, public, a, a greater number of readers uh, without losing the, um, the vigorous um, particularity and singularity of his style, right? So Machado just has got to do this uh, in this first uh, important, very important novel for uh, our literature, for Brazilian literature, right? So what happened in Brazil at that time, I mean, that was 1881, it was before the proclamation of the Republic, I mean, we were, we, we were still a monarchy, and uh, it was before the um, abolition of slavery, right? So at that point, when he published this novel, we still had, have, uh, we, we still had slaves, and we s still didn't have um, a democratic, Republican sort of political system, right? I mean, not that with the Republic we became, we suddenly became a democratic nation, not at all, but it was said, I mean, it was the type of regime that was more like welcomed by intellectuals worldwide, I mean, in the Western world, right? So 
at that point we were still struggling with so many uh, structural problems that we had that were supposed to be solved uh, when we became a free country and when we became a republic. And uh, we became a republic in 1889 and the um, abolition of slavery happened in 1888, so that uh, by that time Machado had already published I think two or three novels, and after that he kept publishing novels, I mean he published many many novels until uh, 1908 when he died and when he published his last novel. Um, so Machado de Assis followed and wrote while all these very important uh, um, moments of our history were taking place, right? So he saw everything happening and he did write about this. But here with Bras Cubas, we are still a monarchy and we are still a country that welcomes slavery, right? Uh, even though at that point we already had a couple of laws that were already becoming this the situation of black people a little bit better, um, but it was still um, not at all a, a free country and didn't become suddenly a free country after we abolished slavery anyway, but this is a different discussion. Um, so. Machado de Assis in this book is dealing with a lot of the problems that we had at that time. Um, if we consider, I mean, specific political problems and social problems, but in a broader way, he is also dealing with problems concerning the human experience in modern times, right? So this is what I find most appealing about his book. And what I think um, puts this book like in the in a similar position of of Moby Dick in the sense that it starts to take the problem of modern identity and modern subjectivity, individuality, as a huge and, and problematic issue for everybody in the Western world, and uh, both writers, both Melville and Machado de Assis, were trying to deal with this new sort of uh, individuality, with this new sort of identity that we were starting to develop uh, by the end of the 19th century when uh, we had so many changes going on in history and so many changes that would change like the essence of society and the structure of society, right? So the fact that we are becoming a more, uh, more and more complex sort of society in which we have many people involved as we were discussing last time when we were talking about Moby Dick. I mean, our uh, population is growing really fast and we're starting to have very complex ties between people. Uh, and Machado just sees notice that, just like Melville, and he um, had that in mind and, and, and try to discuss this whole problem uh, while writing this novel. So coming back to the history of Brazilian literature, I mean, we were discussing, we were talking about uh, José de Alencar before with his book Senhora, and already it's a, um, I mean, just like the change from, from Scarlet Letter to Moby Dick, we have a huge change from Senhora to Bras Cubas, and maybe this is a much more uh, conspicuous, so to speak, I mean, visible sort of change when we when we compare it to the American pair, I mean, to Hawthorne and Melville. Uh, from Alan Carr to Machado de Assis, I mean, from Senhora to Memorias Postumas de Bras Cubas, and the, we have just years of difference there. Uh, Senhora was published in 1877 I, or 75, I forgot now, but 
around the end of the 1870s, and then Machado published Mal, uh, Brasco in 1881, so just a couple of years afterwards. Um, and there is a huge difference in terms of style, in terms of narrative purpose, in terms especially, and I've been uh, talking about this and repeating this, especially in terms of the role of the plot and the role of the uh, depiction of characters, right? So in Senora, we did have some uh, investigation in human psychology, we have a, 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 a type of a novel that we have the individual in the center of everything, so we have this, this uh, singular individual in the center of the, of everything that is going on, of the actions, right? But we still have a reliance on the plot that renders the novel something like a, a collection of adventures in which we do see um, in, uh, in modern individuals uh, struggling with problems uh, from modern societies, but we don't have such a complex uh, development of the, of the novel and an integration, a very strong integration between the, the plot and the fiction of characters. We saw how in Moby Dick um, we had uh, the, uh, the, the investigation in human psychology and that was being done through the fictions of the characters with the development of the plot. So Melville got to integrate in a very strong way plot and depiction of characters and, and, and the depiction and then the, individ the individuality, uh, the modern individuality was at the center of everything. That also happens with Machado de Assis, with Bosnia's uh, Memoirs of Rascudas, right? We also see that going on here even though the style is different and the narrative is different and we have so many differences between these two writers and these two novels. Uh, but this is a similarity, the necessity of uh, getting over this type of narrative, in narrative that pays too much attention to the plot and less and too little attention to the depiction of characters, to the psychology of the characters, right? So we have really an integration between plot and and um, uh, depiction of characters. And with Machado de Assis, uh, there's one very important critic um, of his books that says that, um, and, and this is a, a sort of um, perspective, a more like a historical and socioli sociological perspective, um, of, of, uh, of an interpretation of his books, but this critic says that um, Machado de has got to uh, produce a type of form that would reflect the problems of society at that time, right? So he, uh, he says that, uh, and, and, and that is very important. I mean, we, we may not agree with his historical and sociological uh, point of view and perspective, uh, but one thing that is important is uh, the attention to the form, right? So we use language, we use the form of the narrative, we use the whole structure of the novel in order to uh, get into a reflection and get into a discussion about the development of modern individuality and to, I mean, in a way that it, the, the novel offers a important source and important material for the reader to um, analyze himself and think about his own life and think about his own uh, problems and issues, right? So when we start to see the historical and philosophical and existential uh, problems of modern individuality really at stake, 
uh, is when we start to reform this realist novel that I've been talking about, uh, about which I've been talking about. Uh, and that was the, the, the sort of guide for, um, for fiction through the, the, throughout the 20th century. This is why I believe these two writers were seminal for the development of modern fiction as it was practiced, as, as it was done throughout the 20th century, right? So these two writers from the end of the, the second half of the 19th century were the, the, probably the fathers of their uh, respective literatures. Melville, the father of American literature, and, and Pasha Pizzi, the father of Brazilian literature, in the sense, right? So, Machado de Assis actually, before he published in the Modest Postmas Vasco, because he started publishing around the 1860s, uh, and before publishing in Modest Postmas, the Brass Cubas, Postmas Manuel and the Brass Cubas, he published a lot of things, and he also wrote criticism, he also wrote, uh, he even wrote drama, uh, and he wrote a lot of short stories. Um, but before getting into this realist form uh, that we see in Postman's Memoirs of Rascubas, uh, he did write some, some novels that are known and are seen for many critics as romantic uh, novels. So he wrote novels that were not so complex in terms of this integration of the plot with the depiction of characters. Uh, and <clears throat> he was a, a, a he's seen as a, a writer that has two different phases in his career, so the romantic phase and the realist phase. This is a, a, a very common uh, 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 description of of the, the, the evolution of his fiction uh, among uh, Brazilian critics, critics and, and also foreign critics as well. A lot of people from uh, different countries did write about Machado de Assis and some of them were not very successful, I think. I mean, in my perspective, they, were, they are very important critics in, in any case, but um, just like with Melville, I mean, throughout the time, uh, criticism was uh, became more and more familiar with uh, the, the, his style and became more, I believe, accurate in terms of the sort of criticism that they would do um, about him. But so he's known for having these two phases, um, but. Uh, I mean, some critics say, and, and they have this this uh, perspective that shows that, that they show that they, they try to show that actually his romantic novels and his romantic short stories actually were not uh, romantic in the traditional sense, or not in the sense that all the writer writers were uh, romantic at that time. So. It was a little more towards, I mean, realism, some critics say, was in him as a seed or, I mean, around his writings since the beginning. But in any case, with this novel, he changed a lot the perspective and the, the type of style that he was doing uh, so far. And that is also another similarity, similarity if we compare him with Melville. Before Moby Dick, Melville was not a very mature writer. I mean, he wrote very interesting things and very important uh, books, and we, 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 can, we cannot even call these books novels. I mean, it's more complicated, complicated to, to, to describe his books as novels than what we do with uh, Machado. But in any case, Melville also wrote a lot of things before Moby, Moby Dick that were not, uh, I mean, 
so significant as this novel, as Moby Dick, right? And Machado de Assis, same thing. With this novel, he changed his style and he changed the whole uh, uh, direction of Brazilian literature, right? So uh, another thing that I think it's it's similar among these two writers is the I mean the, their perspective uh, about fiction was similar in the sense that they both believed that fiction was a very important cultural element in society and it was a very it's a very important element in uh, in a serious type of thing that helps us uh, reflecting and thinking about our own individuality and our own societies right so they would see literary texts as sources for the comprehension of people and human relations and modern society overall, right? And they were not so, uh, even though Machado got to, to reach la a large audience, I mean, he was not so concerned with the fact of, of uh, I mean, with the necessity of selling and, and making money out of his books. I mean, they both wanted to do that, but they both had this these uh, this perspective about what literature is that I think is kind of similar, and it's similar when we consider their conceptions about a national literature and what makes you a an American or a Brazilian writer, right? And to what extent you have to call yourself a Brazilian or an American writer. So they both fought for independence in their uh, writings, right? So uh, Machado de Assis, just like Melville, also saw uh, with very, uh, with some concern, this necessity of depicting, of showing, of painting the book with the so-called local color, right? That was something that was also very common in Brazil and maybe it was even stronger, right? We saw how Alencar did embody this, this task of forming a national literature and how he was uh, worried about showing the country in, this, in his books. Uh, Machado, uh, both Machado and Melville were more uh, concerned uh, about showing their individual styles than showing their uh, nationality in, in their writings, right? So Machado also was, uh, would say something similar, just like Melville did when he said that uh, I mean, the local colors should not be I mean, dealing with the problems of your nation society should not be just a matter of mirroring things, you know, it shouldn't be just, you know, showing landscapes uh, of the country, just showing the, the settings of things. They really wanted to discuss things in a deeper and more programmatical way, right? So they had a, a similar modernity, uh, if I may use this word in this sense, right? So, um, but to be, to be more specific about this book and about Machado's style, uh, something that you have to have in mind is that one thing that is central for his writings is irony, and this is something that was well studied by a lot of critics, so we have a lot of, of, of studies and, and criticism and analysis about the way Machado de Assis works out his irony, and um, I mean, we, we can also see irony in Melville, but in Machado it's maybe like more irony and sarcasm and humor, everything mixed together, and 
he really did not take reality so seriously as Melville did. So uh, again, a lighter type of, of novel and a novel that is intended to laugh at everything. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a dead writer, right? So, so he kind of like, and, and this is interesting, more, uh, uh, maybe more visibly than, than what we see in Melville, what we have here is uh, a, this type of narrative element that is kind of new, which is the intended author, the, the uh, fictional author. Uh, Brás Cubas is not only a character and the narrator, he's an author, and he identifies himself as an author since the beginning of the novel. Uh, and he also plays with this idea since the beginning. Uh, I actually had a look at the most recent translation of Cosmos Memoirs of Brass Cubas and I found very interesting and very well done the translation. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty, um, pretty good um, solutions for problems of language, right? I mean, but that is another thought of discussion, you know, translation and everything. It's a different field. So in the, uh, I mean, there is a, a, when you open the book, there's this, this dedication of the novel to the first worm that ate his flesh, right? And then you have a prologue or, I mean, a forenote to the reader, and in this four note, he says that the book was written with the pen of mirth and the ink of melancholy. Uh, so, I mean, mirth, which is ridicule, sarcasm, and, and you know, and, and this tendency to laugh at everything, uh, but at the same time, pretty melancholic. So. We, we have here the sense, I mean, the, the type of writing that we're going to face, it's already kind of like there is, there is an advancement, a, a kind of a, a warning to the reader, right? So see, as if he was saying, see, reader, you're going to uh, see a lot of things, uh, very, very, I mean, a lot of funny moments, but at the same time, pretty sad moments at the same time, right? So he says he's pretty pessimistic, uh, but at the same time, he does not give up on laugh laughing at uh, his own tragedies, at his own uh, demise, so to speak. And then he says that, uh, I mean, he says that the, not many readers will enjoy his writings, I mean, his book, um, and he says that he will not be able to please serious readers uh, because the novel is not serious enough for serious readers. And he also will not be, uh, uh, I mean, he will not favor frivolous readers either because the novel is not uh, romantic enough novelistic enough for frivolous readers so he pretty much says that he's not gonna be able to please anybody no serious people uh, I mean on one hand serious people will not enjoy his novel on the other hand frivolous people will not enjoy his novels either so who is going to enjoy his novel uh, this book right um, that kind of like introduces maybe the the uh, the tone of the novel in the sense that this is not a a, a contrasted uh, sort of novel I mean it's not a novel that will see life through these opposing uh, opposing poles you know and that is also something that is that that, that uh, makes this novel something kind of similar 
to uh, Moby Dick, right? So this tendency of of uh, melting away oppositions and showing to the reader that life is much more than uh, a, a construction of uh, opposing poles, right? So the novel is something in between, right? And the novel is something that will try to focus on, on human experience through a, a in-between sort of uh, walk, so to speak, through the experience of this author slash narrator slash character, right? And he closes this forenote to the reader uh, saying that if you enjoy the novel, I am I, I consider myself paid for my labor. Uh, but if you don't, I will pay you with a flick of a finger. Uh, I mean, this guy is really, uh, really, um, he doesn't have the limits, you know? So we are going to see this throughout this whole the whole novel and throughout the whole novel we are going to see a lot of his tendency and this is the most important thing in this novel maybe the tendency of step stepping forward and stepping backwards so also a movement that we see somewhat um, something similar in Moby Dick I mean this tendency of uh, having a and then stepping backwards, but Ishmael is much more self-aware. Uh, he's much more. Um, uh, I mean, there there is a sort of a, a a evolution of his characteristics of his personality throughout the book, and even though he goes from the dogma towards the open-minded uh, sort of a perspective about life, it looks like he's departing from here and, and reaching a point, right? In some way, there is, uh, he's firm, I mean, he's, he, he is very secure about his flexible identity. He's self-aware. And Brasco does not so much. Brasco does is really uh, being very ironic towards other people, towards society, and towards himself in a very kind of disruptive sort of way, right? So maybe the um, I mean we can describe this difference uh, having in mind the consequences and the 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 final result of the character, right? So, I mean, Machado have already said, I mean, Brasco has, has already said that he's kind of pessimistic and melancholic, so that is um, a difference between him and Ishmael. And we can, we can keep uh, doing this comparison. I will be glad to hear what you guys think about this, about these two narrators. Uh, but in any case, um, uh, uh, the most important characteristic of this author slash narrator slash character is what this critic, uh, this very important critic, described as the volubility. I don't know if this word exists in English, but it's the, it's the tendency of walking forward and backwards all the time. He's not very. He's not consistent at all in terms of his principles and and what he can learn with his principles. I mean, he's not actually learning anything. He doesn't want to be a a sort of a, a, a target as a personality for the reader. I mean, he does not. I mean, the reader does not really identify with his. Uh, personality, the reader laughs at him, and he laughs at himself, so this this narrator is really someone who is um, 
seeing everything and that includes his own personality as something that we pretty much can laugh about uh, and we do not take it seriously but at the same time as a whole the novel is made as very serious fiction right and it's um it's very serious because the reason why we, we laugh so much at ourselves and at society is because uh, we are idiosyncratic creatures, we are contradictory creatures, and we change all the time, and we are not very consistent with our uh, own individual personalities, right? Um, it reminds me of people, especially when we discuss politics, people keep trying to to uh, look for coherence in, in, in other, other people and others overall, right? So uh, you see someone who has a specific type of profile, who believes in this and that, who has this and that value, this person votes for in a specific uh, politician and for you sometimes that does not make sense. That is because people in life overall, I mean, if we look at, at it with a broader perspective, people overall do not really make sense, right? So this is the perspective of, of Machado with this book, I mean, and, and this is a type of a, a an interpretation that sees his writings and his style and his purpose with, with his fiction as something that can be read and appreciated and, and used as a source of self-criticism for people all over the world. Uh, now, to mention the specific uh, uh, um, issues and topics regarding Brazilian history and Brazilian society, uh, there are a lot of elements in our society that maybe we can see in this novel and that we can, I mean, we can criticize and think about using, uh, I mean, uh, our interpretation of the novel, right? So, um, and, the, and maybe, I mean, maybe we're going to get to, to superficial generalizations here uh, so let's try to be cautious uh, as much as possible but um, maybe Brazilians are not to be taken seriously <laughs> I mean in in the perspective in, in Machado's perspective right uh, our society is not to be taken so seriously I mean that is something course we have to specify and, and explain I mean I, I do not mean that we are people that can only I mean deserve only to be laughed about uh, but um, it's just that we are always trying to find ways to see our situations and our lives uh, in a, I mean, not in a funny way, but again, the word I've been using a lot, in a lighter sort of way, right? So that is maybe the difference between uh, Brazilian and American literature, and there is the difference, th this is the difference between Machado and Melbourne. I mean, they are both very important writers in terms of the, the sort of... Uh, important uh, role that they play in the development of our fictions, but uh, the, difference, the difference is that Machado does not take our problems so bravely, so seriously. I mean, he does try to reflect about our lives and he does try to make some sense out of his reality and he uh, he tries to to furnish the reader with sources for 
reflections about their own realities, but through humor, through uh, sarcasm, through irony, and he's putting himself at the center of the irony that he himself is building, right? That he himself is composing. So um, maybe the difference between Melville and Machado is is this, right? So it's this this tendency of and one one writer tends to be so serious and so grave, and he's so anxious and and, and uh, touched by the existential existential problems that he is living while. Machado is more like uh, maybe a little more distant towards reality and a little more impartial towards reality than Melville is, right? Um, so maybe this is the main difference. But there are a lot of, I mean, important elements of our society, of our reality in the 19th century and of our reality now that will be uh, visible as we read and discuss the novel. And one thing that I think is very important that we have to have in mind is the, um, the scientific uh, sort of approach that a lot of intellectuals at his time, at Machado's time, uh, was, uh, uh, this sort of uh, scientific perspective that a lot, a lot of intellectuals had at his time and it kind of like took and, 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 and um, uh, covered the whole of our movements and actions towards the um, construction of knowledge, right? So we were trying, I mean, all Brazilian intellectuals, critics and, and literary critics, and literary writers, they were all kind of like dominated by this positivistic sort of perspective about human knowledge uh, to the point that that the, the I mean science became really a dogma uh, just like we see we could see um, worldwide in the Western world I mean we saw I mean we discussed about how rationality became such a dogma and, and like a, a replacement for God in the Western philosophical and literary tradition uh, and culture overall. Um, and maybe in Brazil this process was even more intense to the point that we had, uh, we had theorists and, and philosophers saying that, for example, uh, if we mix our race, uh, I mean, if we race, I mean, blacks and whites, if we mix them together uh, as we were doing and as we keep doing, I mean, every, everybody knows that in Brazil people are uh, more like mixed blacks and whites and they were, I mean, there's no such uh, separation as we can see in American society, I mean, uh, there is more mixture and they would think some, some theorists, some philosophers, intellectuals at, at that time through all, I mean, by the end of the 19th century, believed that if we kept mixing, uh, we would reach a point when people would become wider and wider, and then we would become a better, we would become a better race, right? Because we would become wider, which, which is crazy for us today, but that was something that was going on at the time. So science occupied our society in a very, very strong way. So beliefs were, I mean, dogmas were everywhere through religion, through science, and through many, many different um, aspects of our societies. And Machado laughs at, it, at this. And there is a specific story uh, called in Portuguese O Alienista. I don't know. It, it's probably translated to English. I can't. I, I don't. Never heard about the the name in English. But O Alienista, in which the main character is a. Uh, I mean, he he 
manages a, a, a house of psychiatric uh, people with psychiatric problems and he keeps finding uh, psychiatric problems in everybody and then he puts everybody in this house and he keeps you know uh, every, everybody with every little thing that he would see would make him believe that that, pro that person had a mental problem and they should be treated and then he reached he, he, he gets to a point where everybody in the community was in the house and then he realized that the problem was that he was different he had something that nobody had and that would make him think that everybody was crazy and he was not but then he realizes that it would be the other way around everybody was sane and he was the one who was crazy and then he puts himself in the house so it's it's crazy how science uh reached so many uh, i mean uh, aspects of our society and dominated our society in such a strong way but that is just a, 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 um, a consequence of the role that dogma the beliefs that you know played in our society and uh, that is something that was one of the main issues that were at stake in Machado's uh, novels and the you throughout your reading you're going to notice that uh, but that is just one branch of this central problem which is the belief that people are made of good things here and bad things here and these two things do not mix together so uh, I mean as a modern writer uh, I mean I believe he was a modern writer uh, Machado just saw that this sort of conclusion was not very accurate when he would look around and observe society he would see that people are much more complex than that and he tried to um, discuss this in his novels um, so I hope you you enjoy reading this novel and uh, here I try to you know highlight some of the main um, aspects of his fiction and some things that I think it's important to have in mind when you read the novel and I hope that helps you uh, throughout your perusal uh, and if you have questions and doubts please do not hesitate to write to me right um, and uh, in our debate on Saturday we're going to talk a little more about his novels and I'm really looking forward to to read your comments and see what you have to say about the novel and to uh, prepare our discussion based on your comments and your ideas right so thank you for your patience thank you for watching this video to the end and i will see you on saturday bye bye